um, I'd like to ask Mr. Sanjay Bell, you know, he's a senior consultant with uh, certain, you know, people uh, who are responsible for keeping us all secure in the digital domain to please come up and, you know, make some remarks on this topic that concerns all of us. Okay, uh, good evening. <coughs> I think we've heard a great amount in the previous two uh, uh, sessions uh, from uh, uh, Dr. Jay Kumar and from Ravinder on uh, benefits and uh, you know advantages of cloud, etc. So I'm not going to go on to uh, the benefits and advantages of cloud. I think that's uh, given. And uh, starting off from there, uh, if you look at the background note which was given, there's one line in that which said. What are some of the most common concerns? Is there a one-size-fits-all answer? So I was told to focus on concerns. So that does not mean that I might have all the answers, but I'm just going to raise all the sort of issues which could act as a sort of a checklist for people, uh, either as individuals or as organizations or departments who might be wanting to look at cloud services. Uh, from cloud service providers. I think it has been uh, fairly well recognized that cloud raises uh, complex policy questions uh, around security, privacy, as well as jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is closely related to location, whereas security and privacy are closely tied to access. Now we, we heard about mobile, etc. So while there was location, there was access, but then there's a lot of data in transit. Where does that fall? And now you're talking about in transit, not just within the country, across borders. So what happens in that scenario? Well, when there are uh, sensitive items, uh, sensitive information, sensitive technology, sensitive software, then it falls under the domain of export control. So let me leave that uh, over there, and then let's look at, I'll come back to the export control issue a little later. So let's look at the technical challenges that uh, are thrown up when you're looking at privacy, security, and uh, the sort of trust that you have. Uh, all of you raised your hands that you have trust in uh, the electronic banking, you have trust in uh, different email service providers, etc., etc. So from a technical perspective, in the previous two sessions, we heard or we saw some things on the slide called virtualization. There are various technical vulnerabilities in these hypervisors, which could, which could lead to issues in terms of data integrity and confidentiality. So how do we address those technical challenges? There are also issues in terms of interoperability when you're looking at cloud service providers. Going further, there are challenges from an identity management perspective, because now you're looking at web services. There are people who are providing different services or across. So you can book a hotel room, and then you can also book a uh, uh, airline or a rail ticket or a bus ticket. But these are different people who are working, and these are services interacting with each other. But how do I know it is the same person going from the hotel onto the airline uh, portal trying to book all this. So there are challenges from an identity perspective. So identity in a cloud scenario, is it could be people identity. Further, because you are going to have multiple devices, so device identity. Can I trace you down to a particular device or a particular identity? Can it be locked? Today for a mobile, you can so far say from an IME number, but uh, there are some phones which obviously do not have that IMEA number. But what about the other devices which you have when you are interacting with cloud? If I cannot trace you, how do I know at one end that it is you who is asking that service or someone else on your behalf who is trying to do something of that sort? Let's go for, uh, further. So I, I said, I mean, how do you establish trust between various uh, service-oriented architectures as well as in uh, 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 web uh, you know, application frameworks. And then, obviously, you want all this information to be secure, and you look at something called encryption. So today, there are enough of uh, methods to break encryption. So are the current 
technical methods of encryption reliable? Will my data still be secure? So those are the questions from a technical perspective, if I can uh, broadly uh, uh, talk some of those. Let's look at some of the other aspects from a legal and regulatory perspective. As I said, uh, you know, jurisdiction raises this question about uh, which applicable law will be, uh, uh, you know, applied because based on the location of the data. So if that data is residing in India, it will obviously be Indian laws. But what if the data is residing outside India? Then how are you going to handle that situation? Because you just said, I mean, uh, you mentioned that after five years, will you have that data? if you wanted that data. But that data is not residing in India. How are you going to get it? If you wanted to uh, go to court, how are you going to fight that case? Where will you first of all lodge that complaint or that case? It can't be in Indian courts because you would have signed an agreement saying that yes, uh, knowingly unknowingly you would have clicked I agree and you would have agreed to things residing in, probably in the US or Europe or wherever. When you have challenges in terms of uh, consent of the data uh, subject itself, that your data can be used by other marketing people or not. Because when you sign various forms, as you said, you're getting SMSs, you're getting emails uh, or spam mails, etc. But you agree to a certain amount of data to be shared. Now, if you agree to that, obviously, this is being shared with different people and you're getting all these things and then you start terming them as spam or, uh, you know, then is there a challenge from uh, uh, effectiveness of breach notification? So when there is a breach by the cloud service at the cloud service provider, will you be notified or will they just keep quiet? Are they going to be transparent or not? We obviously have issues from an intellectual property perspective. We heard Ravinder saying that everyone's got intellectual property, but then there are challenges when you're going on to the cloud from an intellectual property perspective. How is that going to be handled? How is that going to be secured? If someone copies whatever you have, how are you going to make sure that it has been copied? Now, are you going to have crawlers, etc., to go and find that out, or are you going to employ someone to figure that out across the globe? What about sovereignty of data? What about issues in terms of identity theft, cyber terrorism, cyber war? And there are issues, again, from standards of evidence. What will be followed in one country, will that be also applicable in the other country in terms of evidence? Transnational extraditions, uh, investigatory powers, uh, dispute resolution, how will all these happen? So there are a whole gamut of issues from a uh, legal and regulatory perspective. Let's go to the operational perspective. From an operational perspective, will the effectiveness of existing risk governance frameworks still be applicable? what you have today, when you go to the cloud, will that be still applicable? That's something that you really need to think through. What about uh, how you, as a department or an organization, meet the legal obligations when data or applications are posted outside India? Because you still have to answer the CAG and others, other auditors, etc. So how will you handle those? Because if they want to go and have a look at things, the cloud service provider is not going to provide all that. How will you make sure that you are still compliant and accountable whenever an incident occurs? How will you allow audits and investigations to be performed? What sort of level of transparency will you allow? How will you handle continuity and resiliency? So having raised some of these questions, apart from that, there are also challenges in terms of there is no guidance on data protection aspect. There are no guidance on auditing. There are no guidance on industry response or on forensics. So all these issues need to be really thought through when you are looking at all this sort of inclusiveness because at the end of the day, the person at the bottom of the pyramid is going to trust what you're going to provide. And if they're going to have that trust and faith in what you're providing, but at the end of the day, they see all these sort of issues and challenges, there will be lack of trust on the technology, there will be a lack of trust on the department which is providing as well as lack of trust on the government and that is why you see a whole lot of revolution happening across the globe on various aspects. So when I talk about this uh, uh, risk perspective, you need to really understand 
how your risk perspective is now going to change because now you're going to be looking at risk not from a static perspective or once in a year perspective but on a continuous basis are you ready for that are you in a position to evaluate risk on a continuous basis are you in a position to ensure that that is understood by the board or the senior management are you ready to understand that that gets percolated to the bottom most person who is the front line person in the organization and how are you going to retrain people for understanding these risks because these risks are going to change and that will also help see what is going to be your risk perspective and how much your uh, are you going to be conservative are you going to agree to certain amount of risk etc today when you're using uh, email etc from different service providers you assume the certain amount of risk and you said oh, fine it doesn't matter to me but once something happens to you is then you start running around enter schedule but at this point in time you have assumed that nothing will happen when you look at some of the existing case studies where people have moved on to cloud and what does come out from that so that's why I've told you from uh, various perspective what exists. Now, when you look at some case studies, what comes out is that there is still an immature and exploratory nature of cloud computing deployments by service providers. The tolerance of risk prior to migrating to the cloud really has to be thought through. The balance of business benefits to cloud computing and achieving the security and privacy obligations, you have to be very careful in understanding those. And you have to also understand how to integrate the security into your existing security measures. And then what will happen if there's too much of dependence on one cloud computing deployment, how will you move out of it if you want to move out? And can you tailor and specify the security agreements to your requirements? That will only happen if you have significant negotiating power. Otherwise, there is no way you can do that. You can just forget it. From a third dimension, if you look at interacting with people who have deployed, not just from case study, but in talking to people who have deployed cloud, they say it was very difficult to achieve a high degree of accountability or transparency in the cloud from the service provider. There is little awareness from the service provider's side to either the cloud customers or to the citizens to let them know what's going to happen. And there is obviously, as I said, uh, hardly any established guidance, etc., in terms of what should be done. If you look at now the third di uh, fourth dimension from a research perspective, there's a little bit of research only done in terms of scientific and technical in supporting the investigation into processing of encrypted data, security measurement, <coughs> security events and incident ma uh, monitoring, etc. In also in the policy research side, there's not much done. As it's already, you know that there are three types of uh, services which are provided, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. Now you look at the layered service approach. Someone might be providing software as a service, but there might be someone else who's providing infrastructure or platform as a service. Now when you have multiple service providers, all these issues which I've talked take a multi-dimensional perspective and become much more challenging. So if you look at what should be done, now that the cat is out of the bag in terms of what the issues are, you need to apply the CAT principle, which is compliance. You need to make sure that there is harmonization of relevant legal and regulatory frameworks across uh, multiple uh, jurisdictions. There should be accountability, especially to consumers, and there should be transparency from the cloud service provider, and which should be measured and managed. And there are different uh, aspects to this. I won't go into details right now. But one of the ways to look at things is uh, Plum's framework, where you have providers, the P, L uh, is layers, U is the users, modality, scope, and that will give you as to where is this going to be a local perspective that you have things deployed locally, or is it going to be an international perspective and where your challenges are going to start coming. As a first step, that's an uh, interesting uh, deployment uh, model from uh, Plum's perspective. You can look at that and then uh, start looking at things. So I'll stop here. I will, uh, uh, as I said, I'm going to raise a lot of concerns. There are some answers. It's not that technology does not have answers, but this is not only a technology perspective, it is also a people perspective as well as a process perspective. So you need to think through not just the technology, but also the people and processes. And when you go to cloud, obviously these are different maturity levels of technology which have come to cloud. When you come to cloud, 
obviously it means also your own processes etc need to be extremely mature so i will leave it at that and uh, let the others talk about it thanks so thank you mr bell for you know highlighting a number of risks and concerns that exist you know as somebody who's a technologist in this area responsible for securing all of our government infrastructure he has every right to be concerned about a lot of things